Hey guys, Down Phoenix here. Welcome back to what I'm playing. Today we're going to be checking out a new indie game, Demon's Tier Plus. It's available now on Steam, which is where I'm playing it. And on June 9th, you can get it on the Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, as well as the PlayStation Vita, surprisingly. So it's on all the major consoles, and it's even on the Vita. This might be one of the swan songs of that system. Of course, if you get it on PS4, you'll get cross by, so you'll get it on both systems. Fantastic deal indeed. This one's brought to us by Diabolical Mind and Cowcat Games, which brought out two of my favorite indie games of 2019, Xenon Valkyrie Plus and Riddle Corpses EX. Fantastic games in their own right. This game does take some elements from both of those games, but it also has some of that old school Gauntlet Robotron 2084 style of gameplay. You have randomly generated dungeons, so this is a roguelike kind of game. Although that really only extends to the dungeons themselves. You do have the ability to get upgrades for your characters. You can find weapons in the dungeons and purchase them. And you can also unlock new characters so that you can have an easier time going through the dungeon. You have different items that you can use, keys. Uh, you have a magic rope which will allow you to save your currency that you can use called D tokens. That's what you'll use to unlock characters, buy items, and upgrade your weapons. So you definitely want to make sure to keep those in mind. Now, if you die in the game, you will have a tombstone in, in kind of a Dark Souls esque faction. You can actually get your stuff back as long as you can survive and get to the tombstone in time. So this is a fantastic indie gem, I must say. Um, now, for some reason, the Steam version is just called Demons Tier, but the title screen does say Demons Tier Plus. I'm not sure why the Steam one hasn't changed. Uh, basically, the way they do this, Diabolical Mind is actually the original developer of the game. Um, but I guess he's friends with the developer of Cowcat Games, who has taken it upon himself to add some new content, you know, do some improvements to the game, and of course, handle the console ports of the game. So. Uh, very good work between the both of them. And then, of course, we have Georgie Yost, who did the soundtrack for their other games and some other indie games. And let me tell you, this music from Georgie Yost is some of the best indie tunes I've heard in a game uh, as far as, like, these kinds of games. Really fantastic stuff that fits the theme of the game very well. Very catchy tunes that probably are going to stay stuck in your head, honestly. And I really love the graphical style. I mean, it's very simplistic, but it has a nice, crunchy, crunchy pixel look. I mean, this game definitely looks like it could possibly belong on an old system, if not for the fact that it's higher resolution and does have higher colors than some of those old systems would. Uh, but I digress. So, basically, as you see here, it is run-of-the-mill dungeon crawling action through randomly generated dungeons. Uh, you get gold through the dungeons, which you can use to buy upgrades through that playthrough. Those upgrades don't stay, but you can get weapons through the dungeon, which will give you permanent upgrades that you can take advantage of. And also, there is uh, items that you can get. Potions, keys, magic ropes. These kinds of items are going to help you out through your dungeon adventures. You get different kinds of keys to unlock chests. You can unlock prisoners, which of course will help you out in your quests as well, give you some extra firepower. And you have different objectives in the dungeons. For example, you might be tasked to kill all the enemies in order to advance to the next floor. And, or you may have to blow up all the bombs or open up all the chests. You know, you have different objectives that you can complete. There's three different difficulty settings that you can play this game through. And, of course, obviously, when you play the lower difficulty, it's going to be a bit easier on you overall. But when you play the higher difficulty, the game does help you out a little bit to compensate for that extra challenge, that extra damage you're going to take, because it will give you a bump up in your stats. Also, of course, you'll have to play those higher difficulties if you un want to unlock different endings. There's three different endings in this game based on the difficulty setting that you beat it at and it gets super tough now i haven't been able to beat any of these other games but i came oh so close man it was so close on tier three i almost have it 
Maybe if I just persist a little bit more, I can finally get it. So you have a total of eight different characters that you can have. You have one that you start off with, and then as you go through the game, you get the D tokens, of course, going through the dungeons. Those are the currency that you can go back into the town to buy these upgrades and buy these characters and things like that. Um, the upgraded weapons, that is. The gold in the dungeons are only for that specific playthrough. That'll let you upgrade your character stats, get higher damage, faster movement, get uh, the ability to use your special moves more often, better defense and health, all that kind of good stuff. You can also get little gems in the dungeons, which can also offer temporary boosts as well. Uh, temporary being that it's only for that playthrough of the game. Uh, you also have two-player cooperative play. You can go in with a friend. And of course, if you're doing it on Steam or PS4, you can take advantage of the remote play or share play functions so that you can play this game even in the middle of a major pandemic. So those are really fantastic times indeed. So it's a really fun blast to the past when it comes to this particular game, Demon's Tear. I really enjoyed my time with this game. I just love the style, the visuals, the music, the gameplay. It's all top notch, people. I really enjoy this game. And I'm probably still gonna be playing it. I'm gonna try to get that tier three. Good achievements too, good trophies. If you're a trophy hunter, achievement hunter, this is probably a very easy game overall to get those in. If you're more skilled than me, you should have no problem getting all of them. Because I have unlocked all but, of course, beating the Tier 3 difficulty. And if I just persist a bit more, I think I will be able to get the hang of that. I just have to learn some new strategies. Uh, of course, you have bullet hell type segments that you're going to encounter in this game. Uh, especially with some of the boss fights. You know, you have a lot of projectiles on screen at once. You can, of course, dodge them by just simply moving out of the way, but at some points it gets practically impossible to dodge. So there is a dodge mechanic, which I don't really understand why they call it a dodge mechanic, but because it, it actually deflects the shot instead, it'll deflect enemy shots out to keep you safe, but that's something you can only use very sparingly. You have a stamina bar that will pop up on your character whenever you use this ability so you can't just spam it like you might be able to in some games so you have to be very careful of when you use that ability you want to try to dodge out of the way whenever possible but it's not always possible so that's why it's very useful to have that ability especially at the higher difficulty settings when you're taking a punishing amount of damage for a single hit you know you really have to be careful fortunately you will be able to pick up some hearts in these chests in order to help refill your health. And of course, you can also purchase potions in the shop, which will give you complete health restores that'll help out quite a bit. So you definitely want to open up all the chests that you can in order to be able to take advantage of this. You want to be able to go through the dungeons, pick up all the gold so that you can be sure that you have all that you need to upgrade the characters. As you play through the game, you will eventually unlock special items like a Master Key, which will unlock all locked chests, which will come in real handy, uh, when you're, especially when you're playing through later playthroughs, because you'll want to be able to unlock the chests. You can also get Dungeon Keys, which will allow you to skip the objectives and go straight to the next floor if you wish. This can be particularly handy if maybe you have all the upgrades that you need, and you don't really feel like explore in that level you just want to kind of move on you do have those dungeon keys that you can take advantage of to make things a lot easier um so this is kind of a real basic game real simple game but it's real fun i think it is totally worth full price at ten dollars a very fair price for a game that will give you a lot of gameplay i got about 15 hours in it so far and i've enjoyed it pretty much the entire time um you have of course all kinds of different enemies they have your own strategies that you have that you need to deal with. Some enemies will just kind of run at you and do whatever. Sometimes they'll shoot projectiles. Sometimes they'll use really erratic movements that will throw you off, move really fast. Uh, some of those enemies are real tough to trick, you know, to trick uh, to deal with. Uh, you have uh, several different boss fights. I wish there was kind of more because the very first boss fight can 
rotate between two different enemies and then the rest of them are always the same i wish there was a little more enemy rotation a little more variety on that but these boss fights are really fun to deal with you know you have some really cool monster designs and all that good stuff you know so i mean i really can't recommend this game any more than i have you know this is my favorite game yet from diabolical mine and cow cat games i've gave both of their games xenon valkyrie and uh riddle corpses ex i gave both of those games nines this one's a flat out 10 this game has all of the stuff that i look for in a good arcade style indie game i mean in i mean really if i have to have a complaint there's no online multiplayer at least on xbox or switch because you can't do share play on those systems uh but i digress you know that's kind of a minor nitpick for a top-notch low-cost indie game fantastic gameplay fantastic music really love the retro aesthetics on this one um, the designs the enemies it's just a top-notch game guys you really need to support it if you like these kinds of action roguelike games over the head you know gauntlet robotron 2084 style gameplay just good stuff man it really is um so highly recommend it let me know if you've checked out demons tier i really want to know your thoughts on it see if you kind of feel the same way i did or if you have maybe some issues with it um just let me know in the comments below is this one that you guys are interested in checking out um so on next time we go for what i'm playing i've got another indie game i'm going to be checking out by the way i do want to disclose i did get a review key from Fabrice of Cowcat Games. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed checking this game out. Uh, but till then, Down Phoenix out.